we should hesitate before we make the perfect the enemy of the good. What's up, you scholars of enlightenment? I hope you're having a fantastic day and have a wonderful weekend planned. A clip of Canadian psychologist Jordan Peterson discussing climate models has gone viral. The clip from Bad Stats sees Peterson discussing the potential flaws of climate modelling and why such models shouldn't be trusted going forwards. And given that this clip is heavy on the physics and the modelling and viral, I wanted to jump in and respond. Now, before we start, this is not a hit piece. I'm not just here to bash on Jordan Peterson. I don't think that's incredibly useful when you're trying to convince anyone or change their point of view. In the past, I've defended his right to speak and be heard, including questioning my alma mater Cambridge's decision to rescind an offer of a visiting fellowship. So I want to give this clip as fair of an assessment as I'm able to, and I welcome sensible discussion down in the comments section. As far as I'm concerned, Peterson is entitled to his opinions, as is everyone else, and I'm not calling for him to be banned or deplatformed. However, if we are to have this free-flowing marketplace of ideas that many, like Peterson and indeed Joe Rogan fans, strive to protect, then there is an associated necessity to call out speakers when they are very wide of the mark. Because after all, if we don't, someone else will end up doing it. If we want long-form, open discussions on podcasts like the Joe Rogan Experience, there is a need for quality control and dissenting voices when inaccurate information is broadcast to over 11 million people. And here, on climate change modelling specifically, I think Jordan Peterson falls way short of the mark. So, here's the clip. The climate change one is a weird one. So that well, one that's because there's no such thing as climate, right? Climate and everything are the same word. And I, that's what bothers me about the climate change types. It's like, this is something that bothers me about it technically. It's like, well, climate is about everything. So, okay, but your models aren't based on everything. Your models are based on Warming. a set number of variables. Yeah. So that means you've reduced the variables, which are everything, to that set. Well, how did you decide which set of variables to include in the equation if it's about everything? And that's not just a criticism. That's like, if it's about everything, your models aren't right. Because mm. your models do not and cannot model everything. Now, for those of you who would say that this clip is taken out of context or that it's a stumble in words in a four and a half hour Joe Rogan experience discussion, this is actually a position that Peterson has expanded on several times before. Here's, the, here's one of the worst things about the whole mess is, so as you project outwards, with regards to your climate change projections, which are quite unreliable to begin with, and the unreliability of the measurement magnifies as you move forward in time, obviously, because the, the errors accumulate. And so if you go out 50 years, the error bars around the projections are already so, so wide that we won't be able to measure the positive or negative effects of anything we do right now. And which he has taken to Twitter to defend following the interview. So. He definitely holds this position that climate change models are unreliable going forwards. Now, I want to try and steel man Jordan Peterson's position in that clip because, as said, his comments seem to cast doubt on the validity of modelling anything. And indeed, I threw out a cheeky hyperbolic tweet in this regard. But I think that that's probably an unfair assessment of his position. The point he's really making and continues to make, as we have seen, is that climate change modelling is incredibly difficult. And we may not have all the variables or data or knowledge or mechanisms we need to make accurate long-term predictions of the climate. Therefore, we shouldn't trust these models going forward or use them to inform political policy. The problem is that even this very kind interpretation of Peterson's words is way wide of the mark. Discussing models more widely, the idea that models have to include every parameter that could possibly impact upon a system to be practical, useful and instructive is a non-starter. 
All models, by their very nature, are imperfect simplifications of more complicated systems. However, good models make useful, actionable, real-world predictions. That's what makes them good. That's what makes them right. Models don't need to be a perfect facsimile of the system they're seeking to describe, but rather contain enough of the key parameters and mechanisms to return the key cliff notes within a reasonable level of uncertainty. As George Box famously put it, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. I don't need to include Einstein's relativistic corrections in Newtonian models to know that a plane will fly, or how to land the most incredible machine on a planet more than 300 million kilometres away. I also don't need to know that space is quantized to accurately model the trajectory of a football. The entire history of science and physics is progress from one imperfect but useful model to another imperfect but useful model, asymptoting towards truth and an objectivity that we may never reach. Newton's Principia is generally reckoned to be the single most important scientific book ever written because for the first time it set forth a working quantitative, exact, mathematical system based upon experiment and critical observation. Now, of course, I don't believe that Jordan Peterson wanted to dismiss the entire history of science and physics or dismiss the validity of all modelling. Although, for someone who claims to be very precise in their speech, he came pretty close because we can play the same game that I just did above with climate. In a recent tweet clarifying his position, Peterson challenged climate modelers to be able to predict the price of one single stock for a year and risk their own money on the prediction. But just like I don't need to be able to predict the movement of every single stock to predict that the economy will probably recover as we move out of the COVID pandemic, I don't need to know whether it will rain in Mumbai at 3pm on September the 4th, 2076 to extract the key, reliable prediction that human activity pumping millions of tonnes of CO2 into the atmosphere will continue to warm the Earth. That's the key, vital, consensus cliff note of climate models and requires only some relatively basic calculations and the more than a century old laws of thermodynamics. You don't need to include everything or be able to predict everything to be able to predict outcomes that are likely useful and instructive. Peterson is correct that modeling the climate is hard, but his stock exchange analogy betrays that he's seeing the trees and missing the forest. There are also some more specific problems with Peterson's critiques of climate models. Peterson continuously makes the claim that the errors of climate models compound like interest over time, and hence models are worthless as we predict further into the future. This statement is inaccurate, as many climate experts have pointed out. The uncertainties of climate models do not compound like interest, as errors in weather forecasts do. Peterson seems to be making the classic error of confusing weather with climate. Again, picking on the fact that modelers cannot accurately predict minute details in one specific area and at one specific time, while missing the wider fact that they can predict how the climate will respond on a broad scale to different factors, such as higher levels of CO2, produced by human activity. Indeed, as Dr. Zeke Hausfather and numerous sources, including NASA, have pointed out, climate models have pretty accurately predicted future warming since the first climate models in the late 1960s and early 1970s. They've done a pretty good job at getting the key point right. They've done a pretty good job at getting the key point 
right. Now, it's certainly true that climate models, like all models, are incomplete. And some variables need more work and constraining. For example, the impacts of airborne aerosols and clouds. That's a large part of the reason why the cloud experiment was built at CERN during the end of my time there. But these models are the best that we have. And as I've said, they get the key point right. What really concerns me as a physicist is that Peterson's attitude to climate models echoes a sentiment that I've been seeing a lot recently, one of scientific nihilism. The idea that if we can't be perfect in our predictions, then there's really no point in proceeding any further. Peterson is sitting on the sidelines, inaccurately poking holes in a discipline he seems to know very little about, while offering no viable alternative, improvement or pathway forward. This seems to be a position that a lot of contrarian types run to. And we've seen it with COVID vaccines, where many argue that we shouldn't be taking these injections because we cannot be 100% certain regarding their long-term effects. This despite the fact that doctors can't conceive of any viable mechanism whereby vaccines could be more dangerous than a COVID infection for the vast majority of people. It's incredibly rare that we can make perfect long-term predictions of complex systems. Coronavirus case modelling has shown that, and I can understand why many are hesitant or confused when it comes to long-term forecasting. But sometimes we need to proceed using the best data and modelling that we can muster. That's the entire history of science and human progress. We shouldn't lightly cast aside our best models and the consensus view of hundreds of our most dedicated, talented and hardworking scientists without a very good reason. In short, we should hesitate before we make the perfect the enemy of the good. There are many reasons why people like and respect Jordan Peterson whether it's because he stands up to attempts to quash free speech, his opposition to medical mandates, or his work with disaffected young men. However, let's not conflate any good work he has or is doing with what he's doing here. Here, he is throwing shade at climate models without any relevant expertise or evidence from a massive platform and at a time when it is incredibly important that we take their predictions seriously. That doesn't mean that we can't have discussions about climate change mitigation policies or the rhetoric, politics and often hypocrisy of climate change scientists, politicians and pundits. We can do all of those things. But recently, Jordan Peterson seems to be wading into a lot of topics where he doesn't have the relevant skills to comment and taking a lot of contrarian positions without the relevant expertise or nuance. He needs to do better. I want to know what you think, because you're the scholars of enlightenment that I do this for. So please take a moment, if you wish, to let me know down in the comment section. And if you like this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, setting up notifications, and sharing this video more widely. I can't tell you how much these simple actions help me out and how much I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being scientific. Thanks for being bad.